Ochele ku BBS Telefaida nkukulisayo wali mu program tunda ebyensonga ezebyo bulamu obirabye no lwecho byetanire kubanga byetuleta no ku BBS Telefaina bibera bya muzinzi eranga tubyekanyiza ko nyo nyo muzikuru wa mgema katumba Gerard nze nkubuza ko mukasera kano kenyine twagala batu alate ku nsonga endala nsonga ya bya bufuzi nsonga ya bukulembeze ngabo twakusubiza una ko regulo edane ku macho wedda tukusubiza wali mu program zukuka nti tugenda kutusa ko buterevo ebiri mu nsisi sinkano ya banabi ya bufuzi ensi sinkano oba enteseganya eze bibina ebyobufuzi ebiri mu gwanga erya Uganda ebigatira mu mukago ogumanyidwanga iPod enteseganya zino nensi sinkano eno uh, biri wali ku resort hotel esangi wa M nyonyo mchisera kino ente kateka yona yona imaze okutandika twagala tugende buterevu omanye bintu nga bitambula obigoberere bulungi president wo gwanga ateranga isentebe we kibina cha NRM ekiri mu buyinza uh, tutegezedwa naye atu se anolwecho ente siganya zimazo kujibwako akawo katugende emunyonyo tule voters in kenya for you to run as an independent you must submit the application one year in advance you must submit your colors you must submit the symbols one year in advance in uganda you can run as dp in primaries and the following morning you are seen with an independent or freelancer we are confronted with the situation of radicals and we believe that this summit will address the question of radicalism. Mr. Uh, President and Chairman of the parties, we believe that it's the role of a country to nurture and grow malpartism. The question of party funding is a question that I want to address. We appreciate that through the iPod and the parties in Parliament, we managed to get funding for political parties. But when you look at the method of sharing, 80% goes to two parties. You have NRM, you have FDC, and you have now DP and UPC sharing the other small part. All of us wake up in the morning and go to party headquarters. We all have administrative costs. We are asking that we can have a slot, maybe a method where we all have seed money, and then maybe say, let's say two billion each party, and then the other remaining balance can go to numeric strength. That way we will be helping to grow the multi-party growth. Finally, Mr. President, to me, I was confronted with the challenge of the yellow question. In Kenya, all parties in the House at least have a representative at Yala. Tanzania is the same. Burundi is the same. In Uganda, you have an independent having a slot at Yala, and the party that is registered does not have slots. We believe that we can use the summit to agree that to grow malpartism, it should be reflected in all our arenas of our political again. Finally, from me, I know that my leader is going to say a lot of this statement, but I am talking this as an administrator, because if my, if my party was in power, I would be the Prime Minister, so I am speaking administratively. <laughs> because I come from the party that is the mother of democracy, the party that is the mother of multipartism, and we believe that all together have a role. My sister Kasule Rumumba and my brother Todong, myself, my brother the chairman, and my brother Katereg and the team all have a big role to play in making sure that we walk multipartism, in making sure that we are all disciplined. And I call upon you, Mr. President, the language is very key to grow our multipartism. Mr. President, I remember in your statement when you have just taken oath as the chairman, as the president of Uganda, but may, we should also remember that you are the chairman of the NRM. The language is very key to our multi-party growth. For instance, when you stated that you are going to wipe out multipartism, that by 2020 there will be no multipartism, that spirit does not help grow multi-party growth. I believe that your presence to the summit is going to help us address questions that pass within. And as leaders, as we speak, these are very key. When you say something, my son Daniel was asking, Daddy, you are DP, but the president has said he's going to wipe you away. I was confronted with a situation like that. I want to ask our party leaders. PP Asman, PP uh, Jimmy Akena, the President Jen of DP, and yourself, and Amuriat Nabuzensha, that we should care about the language. 
whatever we speak should be helping us to grow malpartism so that we are not confronted with the challenge of undoing what Ugandans decided that we should go the road to malparty growth. I want to appreciate you in my delegation. I have the members of parliament. I have the National Executive Committee members, I have elders within the party, I have members of the National Council, I have the youth, I have seen my two whips, Honorable Seungu and Honorable Komakech Riando around, the whip and the deputy whip, and we know that in the current iPod we decided to have the party whips, because so that whatever we decide in council, they can help us to implement it in the house. And the chairman of Busia is around, Honorable Deon Joki, the people's chairman. Thank you so much, my brother, for allowing me space to say these words. I believe that this is an historical summit, and finally, we require commitment. We are not here for a photo opportunity, we are not here to take mineral water, we are here so that we can justify to the country and let Ugandans allow us to lead. Give us an opportunity to lead. And we believe that if we work together, our malpartism can become a reality for truth and justice. Thank you, Mr. President. As you see in the program, they were not supposed to speak. I just gave them three min five minutes. They decided to arrogate them more minutes. So I'm now reducing it to three minutes. <laughs> You will permit me, with humility, as your chairman, that the next speaker, the German Secretary General, Honorable Katerega, you have three minutes. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, Your Excellencies, the Party Presidents, Ladies and Gentlemen, I salute you in the name of God. Uh, before I say anything, uh, just allow me, Your Excellency, to introduce you some of uh, the delegates from Justice Forum. I will begin with the Founder President, Mr. Chirige Mayanja. I hope Your Excellency will remember him in 1996. I, I believe he gave you a, a very hard time at that time. <laughs> uh, Reverend Santos, the Vice Chairperson of Justice Forum, is coming all the way from Gulu. Uh, Ms. Alex Ojok, the Vice President of Justice Forum. Mr. Freddy Kasadia, the Deputy Secretary General. Uh, Mr. Valinda Siraj, representing Justice Forum in Naipod. Madam Nakalita, founder member. Uh, Ms. Apollo Kasuli, Secretary for Mobilization Justice Forum. Uh, the rest. Uh, of my interest is Mr. Kisoma from, from uh, Iganga. He's one of the senior members from Justice Forum. Mr. President, uh, this is an opportunity which might stake as Ugandans. This uh, summit is long overdue. Uh, you remember that uh, in the last Kisanja we were supposed to meet, but situations or circumstances could not allow us to, to, to meet. Now, there are, so many other, there are so many people outside this room who are waiting to see what is, go, what is going to be the outcome of this meeting. Um, requesting all players in this to implement whatever resolution should come out of this uh, dialogue. Second, I should also, I also want to inform the, public, the general public that uh, dialogue is a process. Some people think that we are going to leave this room with all what you want. I should also bring it to your attention, Mr. President, that our colleagues from FDC, they are not here because they have some reservations. 
They believe that uh, NRM should change uh, its ways of managing this country. Recently they were in Rukungiri and they were about to organize the rally. The DP, they are very bitter about what happened in, 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 in Busia and they all believe that uh, it was uh, done by the ruling party. So at the formation of this iPod, we had one core objective, to put Uganda first, to put Uganda first. We must go back to that and put Uganda first so that everybody can get a, a share out of what is in this country called Uganda. Mr. President, uh, ladies and gentlemen, iPod brings together parties in, in the Parliament of Uganda. We should also be very keen to differentiate between iPod and the, and the, and, and the National Resistance Movement as a party. Because as a, uh, 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 the difference between government and the National Resistance Movement. Because some of these things like political restrictions, assembly, is done by the, the government, not the party. So when we are here, we are here as political parties. We should do, keep that in mind and be free to express our feelings so that when our colleagues in the NRM go back, should do, take time to reflect and change what people think that has gone in the wrong direction. With those few words, I once again welcome you, ladies and gentlemen, and I thank our, 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 our principles for accepting to see it together and I believe Ugandans are waiting to see a different Uganda uh, beginning from today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Secretary General Yema. Uh, allow me with uh, great humility to invite the Right Honorable Justine Kasule Lumumba, because she's the only female Secretary General, and allow her to speak the way she wants. She's a woman. We should respect women. Yeah. Thank you so much, Honorable Ebid Fred, our leader. Your Excellency, Yoweri Kagutam Seven, the President of the Republic of Uganda, and the National Chairman of the Ruling Party, the National Resistance Movement, Honorable James Akena, the President of UPC, but the Summit Chair, for the first time, iPod has held the summit since Uganda went to Malt Party in July 2005. Honorable Nobat Mao, the President General of DP. Honorable Asman Basarira, the President of Justice Forum. Honorable Engineer Amriat Oboy Patrick the President of FDC in absentia, Secretary Generals of the iPod parties, Right Honorable Dr. Ruhakana Rugunda, the, Pre the Prime Minister of Uganda and Lead of Government Business in Parliament, the Government Chief Whip Honorable Ruth Nankabirwa, and the Executive of the Caucus in, of NRM in Parliament, members of SEC, Parties, leaders of parties gathered here, I greet you all in the name of Uganda. Your Excellency, I want to take this opportunity to thank you for having created the time and given iPod this whole day. We appreciate as iPod. When you appointed me Secretary General, I went to iPod meeting and the welcome remark and that had been delegated by the Prime Minister, Dr. Ruhakana Rugonda. 
Honorable Nandala Mafabi said, before you enter, we have never met the national chairman of NRM. And you are the people who are failing this summit to go on. I said, let's have the official opening. We shall have a discussion. And once we agree, we shall move together. And we are moving together, but it is FDC that has not come. Yet those are the remarks he gave to me. And I promised and pledged, and I've done my part. Other parties have done their part. Him who raised it has not done it. Here we are as Ugandans. Your Excellency, allow me invite my deputy to also bring our yellow song like the rest have done. <laughs> Remix, remix, we have quite a number of songs. <laughs> but for the summit to keep it cool and nice and calm, we're going to sing a very small song. And I have another choir member here with me. <laughs> yellow, yellow. Habana, yellow. 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 yellow, yellow. NRM, yellow. yellow. DP, yellow. yellow. UPC yellow, yellow. Jema yellow. yellow FDC yellow Yellow, yellow, yellow. yellow. Asantini <laughs> Chairperson of the iPod Summit, allow me to introduce to you the delegation from NRM, led by His Excellency Yori Kagutam Seven, the National Chairman of NRM. We have members of the Central Executive Committee, that is the Apex Committee in the management of the NRM Party, of the Mass Party. Please stand up for recognition. We have the members of the Secretariat of NRM. Please stand up for recognition. We have the Electoral Commission of NRM. We have youth leaders. Stand up. Our team, the majority are the youth, because they are the majority in the party. We have leaders of women. Your Excellency, all of the 36 registered political parties in this country, it's only NRM that has a Secretary General who is a woman. <laughs> leaders of the people with disabilities, please stand up for recognition. <laughs> leaders of veterans, Leaders of the business community. <laughs> Uhuru. You know, some of them came as leaders of Kampala at the same time as leaders of business community, so they may be forgetting. But that is also part of what is to bring a smile to us here. Your Excellency, the issues that have been raised by the Secretary General of DP and the Secretary General of JEMA, these are part of the issues that we are supposed to discuss in the side meeting with the leaders of the parties. Because as you are aware, when Ugandans went multi-party in July 2005, certain things had to change. Some issues, some things have changed. There has been change in the legal regime, but there is more to, still to be done in this issue, on this issue. But also, Your Excellence and the leaders of political parties, 
we also have to understand that whatever we do as political parties we must do everything within the legal regime but we also have a responsibility as political parties and the electoral commission to make sure we make Ugandans appreciate multi-party because we are in the movement system for quite some time so it's the responsibility of all of us to make sure we make everybody understand multi-party so the issue of pointing fingers at all of us your excellence i want you to appreciate that whenever we go for the ipod meetings all of these other four parties keep pointing fingers to me and my deputy but here we are happy that we are with you the national chairman they will point fingers to us in the presence of our boss in the party we pray right on our prime minister we keep improving the legal regime to give space to political parties but also at the same way we need a program from government that will help political parties to, be, to develop internal mechanisms of democracy within the parties themselves because here we are talking about the issue of independence in parliament but independence came up because of our weaknesses within our political parties so it's the responsibility of, of all of parties to make sure we improve in our internal mechanisms it cannot be done in one day it will be a process your excellence the absence of fdc we should always adopt like for us in nrm we behave like football teams you don't leave the field until you have scored so when you leave the field you don't score so i call on my colleagues in fdc whatever may not be going on well don't leave the field this was the opportunity for you to come and raise it to the person the commander in chief to tell whoever is doing what is not good that is deterring you from your space so that it brings order where it is required but leaving the field and leaving it to jema nrm dp to be the ones to talk for you yet you who has felt it more would have explained it better than us we also have issues the order of precedence the order of precedence the protocol in the government has remained the same despite the fact that we went multi party the protocol in the government does not recognize multi parties it is still under the movement system we need to improve this demonstrating that NRM clap for him whenever you create a vacuum whenever you create a gap it has to be filled so he has filled it so you can as well your excellency represent FDC since you are the head of state you can even represent them since they've created a vacuum chair of the summit the issue they've raised about busia and they, they, they've accused the nrm i want people to be sincere it is so painful to be the ruling party the mass party and your candidate is disqualified in busia the candidate of nrm was disqualified the candidate of dp was disqualified but for you to say nrm disqualified its candidate that's not fair to us and that's not the spirit that we are here so i would really request whoever is harboring that we had bigger pain we had bigger pain than dp yes because it 
our candidate was disqualified. And that is democracy. So I want to call on whoever thinks it was done by NRM should remember that our candidate too was disqualified. It affected both of us, DP and NRM. But that is a sign that we should, as party leaders, educate our people the, the, the changes in the law. The law in change of name changed. We should go out and educate our people. As part of the civic education, we are going to give parties, we are going to give people who are going to contest in the next round of 2021. We should not leave it only to the Electoral Commission, it is our responsibility. Your Excellence, when IPOD was under the leadership of FDC, we had several meetings. Next was NRM, and when IPOD was under the leadership of NRM, the Memorandum of Understanding was signed by all leaders of political parties under IPOD. And when it is under the leadership of UPC, we've had the first summit. So next is DP. So when we are under the leadership of DP, Your Excellence, we would want to know the date in advance, when the next summit would be, so that DP can prepare and not get us as the excuse. Your Excellence, people, of part, people leaders from parties who are gathered here, we remain committed as NRM to iPod. We signed and we will stand by those signatures. We will be the last people to leave iPod. That is serious commitment on behalf of NRM. We stand for nationalism and pan-Africanism. We stand for social economic transformation and democracy. NRM Oye. Oye. NRM Oye. Oye. I thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you very much, the Right Honorable Secretary General of NRM. Uh, before I go to the last item in this session, to invite the President of UPC, allow me, Your Excellency, the President of Uganda and party leaders, to introduce the party leaders or the dele delegation of UPC. Uh, can I start with the cabinet members? The cabinet members of UPC stand up for recognition by the delegates. Cabinet members of UPC. <laughs> There you have members of parliament like Honorable Akora, who is the party treasurer, and others there. And then we have regional vice chairpersons. Can you stand up for recognition? Thank you very much. Then we have the district chairpersons who are around. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That one with a loud voice is called the Wala Lao. He was trained by the minister of the then minister of uh, local government, Kalule Setala. That's why he has a, a, a loud voice. Thank you very much. Sit down. Now, with a great pleasure, allow me to introduce to you the first former, fa, former first son to become a president of a political party. The man who was born in State House. 
and the president of UPC, Honorable Jimmy James Michael Akena. Come and welcome your people, the delegates, so that we go for the side meeting of the summit. Thank you. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda and Chairman of the National Resistance Movement, President General of the Democratic Party, President Amuriat in absentia, President Asman Basalirwa of Justice Forum, the Right Honorable Prime Minister, Government Chief Whip, Party Whips, members of the Diplomatic Corps, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am, act I am very humbled that we are able to have this gathering here today. I had been on record that even if we were to have a summit to have a cup of tea, I was prepared to go for that cup of tea. And this is in recognition that the conversation which has started here today is vital. So even if we do not have a substantive agenda, we needed to start the conversation across party lines. And it is a great day to see colleagues singing Egumire, others singing Yellow, I did not quite hear the song for Gemma, <laughs> but in the UPC we have several. In case Gemma needs some help in developing some songs, <laughs> as Congress we have always had songs and every gathering, there's a song for that occasion. As chair of this summit, I think our task is really to facilitate. And therefore, I thank my Secretary General for allowing colleagues to set the tone of what needs to be discussed. I must also report that we had conversations with the Forum for Demo Democratic Change President, and essentially their concerns centers around the right of association. They have made it clear that they feel that their fundamental right to associate is being hindered. And on that basis, they have opted not to be part of this meeting, but have decided or have made it clear they are not opting out of iPod. They have stated that they are going to remain engaged in the processes of iPod, and we will have to brief them on the outcomes of this summit here today. I also wish to thank the Council for giving us a very substantive agenda which tackles on the crux of the matters. And this could only come about on the cross-party basis and discussing freely and openly. I hope that we'll continue in that spirit in order to find a way whereby we can go into elections and come out satisfied that the election was free and fair. <laughs> that whether you win or you lose, you walk away knowing that this contest was free and fair. It is a challenge we have had as a nation and it is important that we address it as best as we can. We are not too far away from the next general elections and a lot of work needs to be done. And on this note, I wish to thank the National Resistance Movement for showing the commitment and bringing such a delegation to such a meeting and most of all for having the chair of the National Resistance Movement, who is also the President of the Republic, to attend the summit.
Whatever our differences At the bottom We are all Ugandans And it should be our dream To see that Uganda succeeds We would love to see UPC on top of that success But if UPC is not there Uganda must still succeed And while we strive to improve within our parties to ensure that we get the best possible solution, Uganda must succeed. So our approach in this dialogue is for Uganda to win. We may have to give up some ground, we may have to compromise here and there, but at the end of the day, Uganda must come out victorious. Honorable colleagues, it is a historical moment as far as I'm concerned. And such moments are not a daily occurrence. I wish that we can hold on to this and ensure that future generations will know that as members of the political parties in Uganda, coming together in 2018, we laid a foundation for the future of democracy in this country. I support wholeheartedly the message from iPod that democracy begins with dialogue. We must be prepared to talk. I am glad that amongst the party leaders here, my elder brother, Chairman Mao, is there in that we went through difficult procedures in order to secure peace in northern Uganda. We were misunderstood by many often considered to be working for the other side but the basis the basis which we went into those talks was we needed peace if it meant sitting down with those who you not normally sit down with we needed that peace in the case now as Uganda we need to have a democracy we can all be proud of we have made strides but there is more work to be done so on those brief comments, I would like to invite the colleagues to the side meeting. Within the program, all the party leaders will have an opportunity to address this uh, esteemed delegation on the matters which we hope to discuss or conclude within the summit. Thank you very much and most welcome. I am honored that this day has come to pass. Thank you. Principles retreat uh, to the summit uh, conference um, across the way. I will now introduce Mr. Brian Kagoro, uh, who I was began introducing a little bit too early before. Mr. Brian Kagoro 
is the founder and executive director of UHAI Africa Group, a Pan-African governance, leadership and development consulting firm with operations in Johannesburg and Harare. Brian is a committed and practicing Pan-Africanist. He is a constitutional and international economic relations lawyer with extensive regional and global experience. Prior to establishing UHI, UHAI Africa Group in 2015, Brian was the Regional Governance and Public Administration Program Advisor for UNDP and also the Governance Team Leader for the Africa Region within the UNDP Regional Services Center for Africa. Prior to that, Brian served as a Pan-African Head and Policy and Advocacy at Action Aid International. And before that, he was a law partner in a leading law firm in Zimbabwe. Brian is an alumni of both the World Economic Forum, Young Global Leaders Forum 2005, and Yale World Fellows Program in 2003. Brian has extensive leadership, policy, research, and advocacy experience and expertise, including in economic governance, philanthropy, transitional justice, regional integration, public administration reforms, governance and natural resource and organizational strategy development. Brian has done extensive work with political parties and inter-party processes as well as high-level dialogue processes. It's in this regard that we have Brian uh, addressing the wider summit as the, the, the sideline meeting is, is, is going on. After addressing us, Brian uh, will invite an interactive session uh, to which you can all participate. If you will allow me as your MC so that I can also retreat to the side meeting where I hope to also be able to um, work with the group that has left. Thank you very much. Brian, you're invited to address the summit. <laughs> uh, a very good morning to you all. Um, in absentia now, the President of Uganda and Chairman of NRM. Uh, I come from Southern Africa, so we call everyone comrade. Comrade Yoweri Kagutam Seveni, the President of UPC. Uh, James, Honorable James Sakena, who is also the summit chair, the president of DP, Honorable Norbert Mao, um, the chair of the Justice Forum, Honorable Us, uh, Usman Asuman Basalirwa, uh, in absentia, Honorable Patrick Oboy, the FDC uh, leader. And I want to pay particular attention to somebody who I saw in this room who may have retreated to the uh, summit. Uh, that's the Prime Minister, Honorable Ruakana Rugunda. In 1997, I was invited by uh, young uh, Ugandans who were championing multi party democracy. I think they were calling themselves the Young Democrats. And uh, I was to uh, I was to give a, a talk at that summit. Honorable Rugunda, who had been a youth leader in the 1970s, uh, came late. I was young uh, and feisty, so I uh, uh, 
who was very unkind to him for coming late. As a young Pan-Africanist, I thought that no leader has the right to keep Africans waiting. Uh, that Africans had waited enough, waited enough for Uhuru, waited enough for development, waited enough for liberation, uh, and they couldn't wait for their leaders because enough time had been wasted. Honorable Rugunda was tolerant, and uh, today I wanted just to say I now have a pot belly, and I noticed you got here earlier than me, so I hope there will be no attack during... Um, uh, a reverse attack during the uh, the break. I thought to start off by telling you three stories, and stories are part of what we understand as Africans. The first story is about a king who wanted to choose a successor. So the king brought three young men to his court and said, I will hand over the kingdom to you, and there is a simple test. I'll give you each a seed, and what you ought to do is to grow the seed. Whoever has grown the seed into the biggest tree will be my successor. So the chaps, three chaps went away, consulted their families, and they tried, they planted the seed, watered. After one week, nothing was happening. But this seed was a seed of a common tree, a tree well known in the village. So the other two chefs decided, why stick to this one seed? So they innovated and got a different seed from the same tree. And of course they started watering the seed, taking care of it, and the seed grew. And there was one chap who did not go looking for another seed, and sat there thinking, well, look, uh, the seed won't grow. After the time allocated, they went back to the king. Two had a, two huge trees. The one had no tree at all. He came back with the seed. And the king said, can I see what you have done with the seed? So the one chap had a tall tree, taller than the next chap, who had an equally tall tree. The third chap, who was feeling a bit constrained, says to the king, I am sorry, king, I was not able to grow the seed, despite the best of intentions. So I know I'm out of the race to succeed you. And the king said, well, you are the king that this territory needs. You know I gave you a boiled seed. There is no way the seed would have grown. The test was not how good or how well you grow the seed. The test was your integrity. And you have demonstrated integrity. I want to say that one of the things that I'm going to be talking about is integrity when you come into a process of dialogue. The second is teaching you something that I learned in West Africa. It is called voguing. In voguing, the best way to demonstrate it in my country in the old days, they had uh, electricity poles. And each time that people had not paid electricity, some enterprising young people would illegally reconnect the electricity. Once they have reconnected the electricity, somebody would come to try and disconnect. And they normally would come with a ladder, go up the pole in order to disconnect. And it is said that the same thing used to happen in Nigeria. And one time the man from the electricity company came to disconnect the electricity. So he went up the pole. And as he was about to disconnect, someone came with a hexo, uh, a, a, a petrol paraffin powered hexo. And he started the hexo, so you can hear it make a noise. So the man up looked down. And the chap said to him, Oga, make you chop, I chop. That means if you cut the electricity, I cut the pole. And there will be immediate results for both of them. Sometimes when you come into dialogue, politicians tend to behave like that. Make you cut, I cut. Or if you cut, I cut. The last story I wanted to tell you is about a burst sewer. Uh, I grew up in a township where sewerage would be taken through pipes. And normally they would put what are called manholes outside or somewhere in between the houses. And in one instance the manhole burst, but what happened is the two neighbors had quarreled. So the neighbors were unwilling to talk to each other in order to resolve the burst manhole. 
So what happened is their children started playing in the sewage water. And they still wouldn't want to talk to each other because they had had a quarrel about whatever it is they'd quarreled. And their children fell ill. And instead of discussing how to deal with the sewage, they started discussing whose sewage was the cause of the illness of the children. My friends, Uganda cannot afford the luxury of looking at the collective plight of the nation and be preoccupied with determining or describing whose sewage or whose challenge it is. Your children will be in the mess that you do not solve as the political leadership. If you are so stuck in your fragile egos and unwilling to see the future, your children are going to suffer as a result of your inability to talk about things you can solve. I wanted to suggest to you that Uganda is in the moment it is in. You cannot continue to run your political parties in this country on the basis of memory alone. Because history and hysteria are important to know where we've come from, but they are not enough. We need to strengthen the capacity of the political parties and political party leadership to imagine, to see the future we must imagine it. We cannot continue to be stuck in 1930 and 50 business when the rest of the world is going to space. The world does not owe Uganda a living. Ugandans owe themselves a future. And if the leadership that Uganda has is unwilling to co-create that future with the people, maybe a day will come when the people will say, you cannot lead us because you can only see the past and not the beauty that can be fashioned in the future. So I do concede as a foreigner that idealism increases with one's distance from a problem. Uganda has suffered from greed, and I'm quite sure whether you're in NRM, in DP, in UPC, or any other party, the problem of greed in this society is legendary. But Uganda has had grievances. Otherwise, you would not have had the removal of various leaders on the basis of grievance. Uganda has struggled with identity issues, whether it's the Uganda question, the Northern Uganda question, Karamoja question. These matters are a critical part of our conversation. But Uganda now faces a demographic challenge. The bulk of the people in political party leadership are above the age of 30. In fact, I am being kind in so saying. The average age of the leadership is 50 plus. But the mean age of Uganda is about 19 or 21. And that means over 65% of the population of this country is under the age of 25. And that means 95% of the leadership of political parties, and therefore the leadership of this country, is almost a decade older than the majority of the population. It is not just about age, it, because it is possible to have young people with very old ideas and old people with young ideas. I'm talking about how we deal with the reality of underrepresentation and we deal with the reality of irrelevance. But Uganda has also suffered from external influence. Last night, a friend of mine said to me as I arrived at this hotel, Aki Brian who bewitched us and died without disclosing the formula to unbewitch us, that we can't get the formula as Africans. I retorted, perhaps it is not a witch, because stupidity, arrogance, and indifference are the greatest forms of witchcraft. Stupidity, arrogance, and indifference creates a political superstition that says to you nothing can be solved. It creates something external always as the center of solution. It is Chuno Achebe who said, people come to Africa to confirm what they already have in their heads, and so they fail to see what is there in front of them. I want to say to you as Ugandans, politicians come to Ugandans to confirm their prejudices, and they fail to see what is in front of their eyes. Sekuture said, to take part in the African Revolution, it is not enough to write a revolutionary song. 
to chant a revolutionary slogan. You must fashion the revolution with the people, in the hearts of the people, and you must model the revolution by how you live. If there are any Ugandans who believe here that they are transformative or they are transformational, where is the example that you have set in the integrity of your leadership? Where is the example that you have set in the tolerance, in the inclusiveness? Where is the example that you have set in ensuring you don't abuse public resources or party resources? Where is the example that you have set in ensuring that you honor women and you include young people? Where is the example that you have set? If you have not set those examples, I was told in Nigeria years back that Brian, if you are a lizard in your own home, you can't be a crocodile elsewhere. We have too many lizards here. Sometimes. Abuterevo, tuchi agena maso no kuweleza avian songa. Tuliwali emunyonyo kuspeak resort hotel. Awali orukunga na runo uluwa iPod. Ensisi nkano yebibina bio ufuzi mogwanga ilia Uganda. Ibilio, buwebicho, bibitambula. Omogezo ya agena maso no kuogera. Uh, Munabi ya ufuzi msaji ya mugondi evo okuvali munda mugwanga area South Africa. Uli den songa angabu wazisenge kachia ugeda kubia ufuzi alina, alina 